Darren Hinch on Melbourne's own 3AW. I'm Darren Hinch. On drive this afternoon, police and fire officials keep telling us to make sure you have smoke alarms fitted in your house or apartment. Makes sense. But how reliable are they? Have you installed the wrong ones? My name is David Isaac. I advise corporations on workplace health and safety and regulatory compliance issues in relation to fire safety measures. I am not an employee or representative of the Australian Standards Organisation. However, I am a member of the Fire Protection Committee for Australian Standards, FP2, which is responsible for formulating the fire protection and warning system standards. The regulatory and standards organisation's function is to produce regulations and standards that reflect the public expectations of safety. The public have been misled into believing that ionisation smoke alarms are safe. The public have not been told of the known limitations of ionisation smoke alarms and that safer and reliable technology is available. In September 2004, the International Crusade Against Fire Deaths appeared in Australian national television program making serious allegations about the type of smoke alarm that were protecting most families around the world. The producers of that program approached the Australian Fire Protection Association asking for someone to give an industry perspective on the Crusades allegations. I appeared on that program to represent the industry and if the producers were hoping for a fight they were seriously mistaken as I concurred with what the Crusade had to say. In January 2005 Television New Zealand's current affair program Close Up aired a story about the Crusade. In the program, they mentioned the worldwide push to outlaw the type of smoke alarms found in over 100 million homes globally. The program's compere and her staff were shocked to learn that there were more than one type of smoke alarm and asked the question, why haven't we been told? I believe, as an industry professional, that I have a duty of care to get this information to the public. Here are some of the reasons a growing body of experts are saying the public should be warned about ionisation smoke alarms. The inability of the ionisation detector to provide sufficient early warning in life-threatening smouldering fires. Ionisation detectors false alarms so frequently people often disable or completely ignore them. The number one room where fires occur, the kitchen, is unsuitable for installing ionisation alarms. Ionisation alarms contain americium-241, which is radioactive and is a potential health risk. In December 2004, the US Consumer Product Safety Commission released a report which stated that in almost all cases, smoke alarms of any type failed to awaken a child under the age of 16 from deep sleep. A solution to this problem is to install multiple smoke alarms within the home and to interconnect them such that when one alarm goes off, they all go off. So if a fire occurs in a child's bedroom and that smoke alarm activates, it will activate all smoke alarms in the home, thereby wakening the parents and allowing the parents to rescue the child. Two months after the Television New Zealand program aired, a high-ranking US fire chief published a scientific paper which was a summary of all published smoke alarm studies for the previous 30 years. Chief Fleming's paper concluded there were serious limitations with ionisation smoke alarms. Our Australian Standards Committee has recognised these serious limitations of ionisation technology and has moved to change the Australian Standards. The latest edition of Australian Standards 1670 Part 1 was published in April 2004. This standard, where it applies to new commercial buildings, mandates that photoelectric type smoke detectors or smoke alarms must be installed in sleeping areas and exit paths. The reason the standard specifies photoelectric technology and not ionisation technology is because the Australian Standards Committee recognises the serious limitations of ionisation technology to detect slow smouldering fires, the ones which typically generate large amounts of toxic smoke. Currently, advanced fire detection technology is used to protect the occupants of commercial buildings. 
And on the one hand, whilst ionisation smoke alarms have saved some lives in residential dwellings, on the other hand, they have kept proper fire protection out of the home and they have contributed to an unacceptable level of fire injury and death. However, because the vast majority of fire deaths occur in the home and not in commercial buildings, the Australian Standards Committee is formulating a draft Australian Standard AS 1670 Part 6. The intent of the committee in formulating this standard is to mandate the use of interconnected photoelectric smoke alarms and heat alarms in all new homes. I believe that once the public fully understands that they are not adequately protected under the current regulations and that proper protection is available, they will act to save the lives of their families. Whilst our Australian Standards Committees are working on this issue, the wheels of bureaucracy turn slowly and the bottom line is we may be years from a regulatory solution. This story has to be told, but there's a lot more to it. You need all the facts. I urge you to visit this website and discover the facts for yourself so that you can make an informed decision as to how to properly protect your family from fire.